would say, no more farts. When she farts, it's always funny, even if it smells. When I fart, it's only sometimes funny, depending on a lot of factors. But when the dog farts, it can be hilarious to downright goddamn dangerous. That air is toxic. Better hold your breath. Dog farts. How unfortunate of dog farts. Someone open a window. Dog farts. I think he woke himself up with that one. I thought at last. Somebody's making a film about farting. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. Well, I have to say, at first, when you said that you were going to do a documentary on farting, and I thought, oh my, yeah. The first thing I said was, how can I be a part of this? How can a creature so little make a smell so huge? Uh, because it's a, you know, it's a very interesting subject and 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 uh, underexplored. Uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's worthy of closer attention. Uh. I'm now going to warm up, warm up my sphincter muscle with a bit of classical music. Well, right, well, my name is, uh, do you want my real name or both names? Real name is uh, Paul Oldfield. Uh, but my alter ego, because as, like any superhero, I need an alter ego when I uh, perform my uh, superhuman um, abilities. Oh. So I metamorphosize into Mr. Methane. How, how, do you, how do you prepare yourself before you perform? Um, I've been upstairs in the dressing room doing yeah. lots of stretches and, and warm-ups. <laughs> okay. So, and I've been tensing using the abdominals, <laughs> so we're now fully relaxed. Okay, <laughs> I see. So, uh, <laughs> they say in Spain and Brazil, Signor Metano. OK, so uh, uh, what kind of activity are we going to see first? Uh, first of all, I've yeah. got a little bit of fine um, talcum powder and um, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on my bottom so people can actually see yeah. that I am <laughs> breaking so, wind. OK, so it's not a fake. That's exactly, okay, because well, uh... obviously people sat at home... <laughs> um, These, yeah. th these, these people over here, they've got what we call the ringside seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK. Do a little bit of talc yeah. on the bottom. There we go. Oh, yeah. Like that. OK. Uh, is it, I haven't got a rear view mirror. Is the... Um, it, it looks very nice. Is it well covered? <laughs> OK. Yes, it's fantastic. Here we go. Thank In Australia, you. I am um, down under. I hold the record for the, the most amount of complaints to a television show. Okay. From five, okay. five, four, three, two, one. Ah. <laughs> 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 All right, very good. Can you guess where this comes from? <laughs> MrMethane.com Obviously, there is a, a Mr. Methane website out there, because uh, if you're not on the web now, that's it, you're not in business. So, yeah, I've got a website, MrMethane.com MrMethane.com The world's windiest website. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Well, my background field is actually American literature, uh, but I developed an interest in uh, American humour. Uh, I run the creative writing program here, and uh, I teach a module on how to write humour. I've been farting, I happen to know, uh, it features throughout the history uh, of humour. I mean, I, I did a project a few years back where I went in search of the oldest joke in the world. Um, you, but you can't actually find the oldest joke in the world, but the oldest joke that I could find, the oldest recorded joke, 
in other words, uh, the oldest one-liner, if you like, uh, is actually a fart joke. Jim Dawson is my name, and I write books. I write books on uh, mainly nonfiction books. Well, farting was, uh, you know, it was, it was a fairly uh, unexplored topic back in 1997 and 98 when, I, when I, I wrote Who Cut the Cheese? Who Cut the Cheese? And when I pitched it to my agent, he, he was extremely happy to, to the city. He says, I think we can sell this book. It seems to be, as far as its humorous potential, it seems to be fairly ubiquitous, I think, you know, across cultures and, and throughout, you know, history. Um, so, the oldest recorded joke is a fart joke, and fart jokes have featured in jest books uh, throughout throughout the ages. It's about, about 4,000 years old. Wow. Wow. Oh, and I'll tell you that joke if you want to hear it. Yeah, I do. Go ahead. Like <laughs> it. It's not. Don't expect too much of it. No, uh, it's 4,000 uh, years old. It's all, <laughs> exactly, and it's uh, like all humour, it's context dependent, I suppose. But it goes, um, something that's never been known since time immemorial is a young lady who didn't break wind in her husband's embrace. Now, you're not laughing, are you? No. And that's usually the response I get to that. Well, first of all, there's the sound of it. Yeah, the, 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 or the sounds, all the funny little things that, that come out of it. Because <laughs> well, they, they, they produce an embarrassing noise, which many people... Try to hide. Yeah. <laughs> This is awesome. All right, here, here we go, here we go. Wow. When would you like to start discussing the said subject? <laughs> no, it is not. You fart anywhere. You fart anywhere in front of everybody. I should be able to fart anytime I want. <laughs> For God's sake. I suppose you don't expect women to fart, do you? Of course, we have the same pipe work that you do. So what about um, in the States? Is there a different attitude to, to farting? The stomach has come back up. And, the and once it gets to the stomach, it's from the production of changing your food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have you ever heard of anybody lighting a belch? <laughs> Well, that's because it Seriously, doesn't, it doesn't two come different out of the gaps. way. <laughs> Probably wasn't funny for the first caveman that farted on a fire. <laughs> I'm just saying. Anyway, going back to the basis of farting, it's, it's a, a metabolic process, quite natural. So why do people find it obnoxious. Well, the thing is, it's, it's a bit really like smoking, isn't it? When you smoke, you affect other people. And when you fart, you can affect no, other people. I think it's a problem of education. Just people, society has established that you don't do this thing in front of people and that's it. But there are some people that do it. Because men like noises. Or reaction. And I have to I have to wait to expect, to expect is the word, I have to expect that my fart will be a silent one, so nobody hears it. That's when your cheeks start to bulge. I get really upset about this, honestly. Do you want equal rights for fart? Exactly. Of course. And contrary to what they would have you believe, girls do fart. Fart? is the bodily function of passing intestinal gas, also known as flatus, through the anus. Have you heard of Mr. Methane? 
No. Gentleman no. that does the... I guess you could give it a little He's bit. a professional farter. Do you know of any professional farters? Uh, no. No, but do you know who might pay him? <laughs> he could become one. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, well, 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 they've been around, I think, uh, professional farters for, uh, uh, for a number of years, haven't they? Oh. Because, you know, in France, in, uh, for example, in the late 19th century, one of the top, uh, one of the top stars in Paris was a guy named Le Pet de Maine, whose act at the Moulin Rouge was farting. Le Pet de Maine. Um, well, Le Pet de Maine, uh, his real name was Joseph Pujol, performed at the, the Pink Windmill, uh, the Moulin Rouge in Paris. And he was uh, where the famous can can dancers uh, perform. And he was the highest paid act. He grossed more than, than, than the pop stars of the day, which were the opera singers. And he performed a, a fart show. Even back in uh, the days, you know, in Roman uh, days, there was a, uh, a, a, a Lepetto main character then. Beyond that, it's very difficult to get the actual facts. And he could suck wind into his anus and then he could expel it at will, you know, and, and, and he had such control over his sphincter that he could, he could, he could imitate uh, musical instruments, animals, birds, and he, he will often add, my mother-in-law. <laughs> so you, you get this thing, you don't know how much he's become um, Hollywoodized, if you like, you know, how much of it's been. Um, pumped up for the movie uh, and, and it's, it's I suppose that, that it's difficult to know how it's difficult to get to the bottom of it really I would say that's the, that's the problem and, and for a couple of years they, they would actually have uh, uh, medical people in attendance because w women especially with their corsets you know that they would go into these hysterics over this guy he was so funny that they would they couldn't catch their breath and they would be passing out and, and, and so these people would rush up and I guess loosen their courses but but he was extremely funny and and, and you know even today there are people who you know are still doing that like Mr. Methane over in England <laughs> I know that I can do it, so therefore I know that Lepetamine existed and I don't think the tale came out of, out of nowhere. It, you know, there's enough people who actually um, recounted this tale and it's become, it has become folklore. Maybe some of his abilities were a bit, uh, if you like, trumped up. But still, I mean, even though the, the French would laugh at farting, you know, it wasn't something that was socially acceptable. In fact, I, I, I was unable to find any sort of culture where it was truly accepted as just, you know, oh yeah, yeah, fart, you know, yeah, sure, that's, that's, that's okay. Japan even, you know, even had a guy that did that, and there was a, a famous scroll, which I talk about in, in, in Who Cut the Cheese, and it, it told the story, this goes back about maybe uh, three or four hundred years or so, and, you know, even in Japanese society, you know, farting was funny. In some places, like uh, there were some African uh, uh, countries where if you farted in front of the wrong person, you could be killed. You know? John Wyckoff, and the degree is D.O. Flatulence in the purest sense is gas that's made in the intestines, usually from the digestion of food by various bacteria and organisms. I don't know why people get so embarrassed about farting. After all, it's a natural process, isn't it? Uh, some people say they get some bloating and uh, distension in the abdomen and uh, that can be relieved by flatulence. Sometimes some people like try to hold in the flatulence and that can be, uh, can cause some discomfort. You know, if it's a bodily function, there's cause and effect. So something causes it. Something causes gas to build up, something causes gas to release, okay? It's a chemical reaction. Nothing serious is gonna happen by not passing flatus. Okay, so 
So it's not bad for you then to hold? No, it's more it's going to cause discomfort. But no, nothing, you're not going to explode or have any problems like that. You know, there are a, num a little number of theories of humour, uh, you know, and you can, you can theorise farting relative to all of them, really. Um, it's a taboo, I suppose. Uh, so Freud would say it has comic potential because it's one of those things that we repress. It was difficult. Would you just excuse me a minute? Oh, oh excuse me. I just, uh, it was difficult to actually... That's a bit, actually... I shouldn't have done that. Two, one. <laughs> well, farting is spelled, yeah, we all do it. Farting is something that, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very funny uh, for you know, young children. Once you reach a certain age and you're supposed to grow up and grow out of uh, childish humour. <laughs> I think that uh, the younger generations tend to be um, more open with a lot of things right, than when I was coming up. I mean, it's just a totally different environment. For them, it's somewhat, it's, everything's about humor. So yeah, it's more accepted because of the humorous aspect of it. You were talking about uh, the 16-year-old that stays in the household. It's about funny. Whereas before, it was about where you were at and if it was proper based upon who was around you. And now that's irrelevant. We are mentally, emotionally, intellectually, we are sane. A point he rather inadvertently proved through an unexpected story about gas. When, when in aeroplane, sometimes this gas problem comes. <laughs> Then, you see, difficult to let out. <laughs> no? So occasionally, you see, look around, then, <laughs> then, then like that. <laughs> now, are you the kind of person that laughs at the general fart joke? Well, I laugh at fart jokes and I laugh at farting. Right. I laugh in situations where people fart. <laughs> Uh, because, as I say, it always has the potential uh, to be funny. There are a variety of reasons why that's the case, I think. Hi, I'm Mr. Safety, and today I'm going to teach you how to hide your farts in public. We've got a tennis player called John Newcomb, uh, and he's, um, it's his birthday today, so why don't we say uh, you celebrate? He's great. I said, I'll, I'll, I'll fart happy birthday. I said, and then I've got a, a, some candles, we'll put them on the cake and we'll blow them out. And uh, that was very nice and <laughs> you are still going, I'm I can ready. hear. I'm yeah. ready, yes. We're going to celebrate. This is for the people at home who may, and people in the audience who yeah. may have a birthday. We're going to blow the birthday cake, the candles out, Okay. one at a time. Uh, I'm just nice, nice and low. Very, very nice and low. Just, okay. just down there, Harold. Well there we there. go. Okay. <laughs> One. <laughs> two. <laughs> three. Is this the last one? Yes. Make a wish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently afterwards, the switchboard at Channel 9, melt, it was in meltdown. I mean, it's a surprising sound anyway, but it's surprising when it comes out of... <laughs> Somewhere you're not expecting it to come out of, and like... Everybody does it, yet most people are ashamed to fart. <laughs> most people don't even like to talk about it. They think it's pretty gross. <laughs> Here at Jokestrap, we think farting's pretty hilarious. <laughs> you know what? It's not just us. A bunch of my friends think farts are funny. That's probably because all your friends are in junior high school. Both of them. <laughs> You know, sometimes you just gotta let it rip. <laughs> and then I get scared to death like that she's gonna, gonna walk in my office. I think so. I mean, I think it's like with any type of um, socially um, maybe less than acceptable uh, symptom, uh, it's not something that people readily discuss. <laughs> Who do you feel most comfortable farting in front of? My kids. Yeah. My husband. Your husband. My mom. <laughs> <laughs> and, my 
and my dad. Tolerated at home, but not in public, or in, and not at the dinner table. That was a big thing. <laughs> uh, just say eventually, you know, you learn your boundaries and other people's boundaries, and you're like, all right, I'm not. As soon as you're done eating, it's fair game. Because right. usually food creates that. <laughs> Me and a coworker, we were at that comfortable level where we would uh, fart around each other, and they would of often make me go back and hide in the ATM room to fart because they were smelly and didn't want me to do it out where the customers would come in. But so I, I don't know what I did to her, but ticked her off somehow. So we were down opening a safe where you had to have two people. So she did her part, and then I went down to do my part, and her butt was right by my head, and she farts, and you can like feel it on your face. It was the most disgusting thing I've ever experienced uh, in my life. I never had somebody actually fart on my head until that point. And uh, wow. I'm hoping that's the last time, but that's not normal in workplaces and it shouldn't be. Have you in present or past relationships farted in front of your other half? Yep. Yes. Yep. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. But farting is one of those things that He's a sign of a good relationship, I think, isn't he? Our it? first five years we dated, he didn't fart at all. <laughs> if you can fart in front of one another. We got married, he farted for a whole frickin' week. Uh, there's a lovely home, homey quality to the relationship and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a positive thing, isn't it? After five years, you changed your mind and felt good to go. No. No, okay. Started eating her food. <laughs> Seriously? No, women don't supposed to fart. Why not? Really? Uh, well, I don't know. It's uh, the way he was brought up. Very. I don't know. Who told you that? Oh. Uh... It maybe bothers you if a woman, because a woman is more delicate, and uh, ladylike. Ladylike, and then, but then we have to put a cork in there. I have a crazy story. I don't even know why I'm admitting this, but I was. Uh, dating a man and we were at a hotel and I felt it, I felt the fart coming on and <laughs> I grabbed the blanket and I pulled it up and I stuffed it in and it was the worst thing I ever could have done. I don't know whether accept, the acceptability of far, family farting varies much from family to family. I guess it must, I mean, I, I'm sure the Queen and Prince Philip don't sit there watching TV at night, um, ripping them off, do they? Uh, <laughs> sort of call the butler to bring the air freshener in, will you? <laughs> Maybe they do, I don't know. The poor guy got to bed and he said, what are you trying to do, kill me? I couldn't be with somebody that didn't think that was the funniest thing in the whole wide world. Right. I grew up with my parents to having farting contests. Like they would start at the top of the stairs and see who could go down and who could keep farting down the Oh my gosh. That's how I grew up, so I can't, people that don't think it's funny. Did you have to eat a special meal before you did that, or? Well, <laughs> the cousins, we all have special foods that we would eat and have farting contests. <laughs> Growing up, it was not something that was easily talked about. It was kind of said to be something that you didn't want to do in public. People, like my best friend in the world, does not think that it's funny. So it's twice as funny to me. <laughs> so I try to like lock out the windows and I'm like, oh, did you, oh, guess what? <laughs> I had the exact opposite upbringing. You know, my dad was all about farting and, you know, just he, uh, we would drive around in the car. He's a classic rock fan and he would always try to fart to the tunes and when <laughs> uh, Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple was on and that's like his, shining moment when he perfectly just released a fart to smoke on the water. <laughs> it was amazing. You, 
your story is completely different from mine growing up because I didn't fart as a child. And, it, and if my do? brother, I had four brothers and a sister. And I would, if they would say, Laura, did you fart today? I would say, no. Because I was so completely embarrassed by it. Really? I, I think it's absolutely hilarious because usually women are so prim and proper. And you know, it's not prim and proper for a lady to cut one. But yeah, I, I think it's the most hilarious thing when you see them do it. It's just that, you know, you gotta be open to allow it. And when women do it, it's, it's hilarious because you know, it's oops. Yeah, you don't, always, you don't always expect it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's always the cover up. Oops, oh, I'm so sorry. And you know, for guys, it's like, hey, it happened. In the most oh, basic God. sense, it's funny, but it's not funny when you're taught by society that it is something you shouldn't do, especially women, you shouldn't do that. Men can do that in the gym or in the locker room or whatever, but women don't do that. Polite ladies don't do that at the dinner table. Other than your family. I know. <laughs> My dad's the same way. Oh, it's not going to smell and just releases the most disgusting fart you've ever heard. And then just keeps the window up. It's like, come on, have some respect. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the sulfur from the eggs. We used to do the whole, we'd eat my aunt's broccoli salad, deviled eggs, and my aunt's baked beans, and then we would all go lock ourselves in our bunkhouse and <laughs> go to town. <laughs> yeah, my boys, you know, have fart contests all the time. Yeah, so there's a lot of, a lot of gas. <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots of gas. Yeah. Well, my 16-year-old, him and his buddy, we were staying at, um, we got a hotel room. And I told them, because they are horrible, they smell so raunchy, I don't even know what they eat. Right. My sister's bit all about gender equality now, so everybody's allowed to fart, I guess. So. Still do that, but it has to be in jest. I mean, you can't really be disgusted by anything that they do, because then you're not in relationship the way that you should be. Uh, first date, I'm not going to do it. Uh, Sorry, she did? I would probably laugh about it. It's definitely not a... A game changer. It's not a mood cue? No, it could be depending on <laughs> what mood you're in. We were over at the lake and it was Christmas time and my dad was being so sweet and he said, why don't you give me your, the keys to the car and I'll go scrape off your windows and I'll warm it up for you. And I was like, that's so nice. And so I did. I gave him the keys to the car and stuff and when I went out there he had not only scraped it but had turned the heat on high and had repeatedly farted in there for a good 20 <laughs> minutes. And I smelled that all the way home. Well, one time he did this big adult fart, like. <laughs> Where were you? Well, we were just in the car driving or something. Driving is a big issue in our family because we took a lot of road trips and they want you to hear it and they want you to smell it. So there's no, I'm gonna roll the window down even if you can't hear it because I'm gonna wait for you to smell it. And my sister was always the one who would be sleeping in the back seat, and then all of a sudden it's like, come on, you have to roll the window down, you're waking her up. Sometimes when we're in the car. America is facing an ongoing energy crisis. As oil gets scarcer, gasoline gets more expensive, and the planet suffers. Electric cars, most of their electricity comes from coal-fired plants or nuclear reactors. So what's the answer? How about a car that's good looking, affordable, and runs on clean, environmentally responsible natural gas? Your natural gas. There's probably 10 kids in the back of my friend Sarah's mother's truck, and somebody did it, and we didn't know who did it. And it was probably a 10 minute drive from the church to the house. So the whole way home, it was just the kids back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it was you, I know it was you, and there was a lot of boys in the car and everybody was just arguing to the point of getting really angry. And finally her mother said, would you just shut up, it was me. And we all just stopped. <laughs> like, wait a minute, that's a mom, that wasn't supposed to happen. Introducing the Flatula Backfire. It runs like the wind because it's running on wind. Here's how it works. Using state-of-the-art sanitary technology, Flatula captures all your emissions and efficiently channels them directly to a powerful turbocharged engine. It's clean energy, green energy, and best of all, it's renewable. If something slipped out at dinner or in the car or something, I would laugh about it and I would probably, I, it would make me feel like they were comfortable enough to do it and, you know, I'm, I'm not, 
going to never call somebody again because they fart. So you wouldn't be judgmental about it? Oh, I would judge the hell out of them, but <laughs> it's not going to make me not want to see them again. The backfire's range is practically unlimited, but if you should happen to run low, don't worry. You're never too far from a Flatula authorized service center where trained, qualified providers stand ready to fill your tank with the gas that's right for your driving needs. Flatula Backfire. It's not just a smart car, it's the fart car. <laughs> no, I think the worst place is a funeral. No, I think it's fine. If you could do it with your partner wherever you're at. Oh, that would just ruin it for me. <laughs> well, it's not exact, exactly sexy, but I mean, not everything about that encounter is always, is it? Sometimes it's funny, so, you know. I mean, TV shows, movies, you don't really see the, the women and the fart jokes. It's, I, mean, I guess Bridesmaids had a, a scene with farting and diarrhea that was, I thought, one of the funniest scenes in the movie. And I, I think playing up on the social idea that women are not supposed to fart makes it funnier. Why is it that men find it funnier than women? Do they? It is a man's thing, and the, the women, and we find it funny that the women don't like it. Do you think women laugh at fart jokes as much as men? Uh, yes, especially if it's men doing it. Or somebody in a very proper situation that, that you just know would mortify you to death, but it's not you, so you get to laugh. It was on the other foot, I've often thought about this, you know, if, if, if a woman farted, you know, then it's a massive turn off for a guy, do you know what I mean? It's like, ooh, you know. I'm always one that, if you're gonna do it, take the credit for it. It know? does not excuse him it's... for holding the blankets over my head at night. <laughs> yeah, holding the covers down. We call that the Dutch oven. My mom doesn't really make any farts. Is she we... the silent type? Yep. And then, um, and then she, um, well, we always say her farts smell like roses, because they don't. <laughs> is, is that what she tells you to say? Social acceptance um, is a difficult one, because even I, as a performing flatulist, understand that. <laughs> People will say to me, hey, don't break wind in here. You know, I'm like, well, look, I'm a professional, you know. I've got more control than you, so that's, that's rubbish, you know. It's, it's not dinner table subject except at our dinner table sometimes, but that's just because somebody just did it. I mean, we, we had standards. There were, you weren't supposed to just go into church or something and fart loud and get a high five for it. But, <laughs> you know, it, so you still had to have respect for your surroundings and especially big public places. And, you know, my parents would get embarrassed, or my mom more so than my dad. My dad would give you the high five, five. down low, but, you know, keep it hidden. I can't, I don't know if there's any winning one story. People talk about having flatulence on airplanes, in job interviews, and uh, the social embarrassment that goes along with it, associated with that. Work or having sex would be the worst. That is when it is not acceptable. <laughs> I disagree. It came out and I got more coverage on that and sold more of that than all my other books combined. People, remember this man because this man will be able to tell you that Mr. Methane does trump from his bottom. Because now this gentleman is going to place his left ear over on my anus. <laughs> I'm going to fast in his ear. Farting was still fairly, uh, it was still fairly taboo in the United States. And uh, they had all these morning zoo programs. And they were looking for any excuse they could find to, just to say the word fart or to play fart effects on, you know, you know, on, on, on the air. So after the book came out in February 99, for like the next six months, I was up pretty much every morning around four o'clock doing all these morning zoo shows. Oh man, it was just, I was laughing so hard I was crying, but I was totally embarrassed, it was awful. 
Go on, oh, welcome, sir. Welcome. Sammy. Sammy. Oh, welcome, oh. Sammy. Welcome. Oh, nice, nice. Come and put your left okay. ear on my anus, nice and close. <laughs> yes, right. please. It, it's it's specific. The right. Not not the right. The left. The left. The oh, left. Okay, okay. The left. This is nothing gay here. This is like men bonding like Vikings, oh. okay? Hey, <laughs> nice and close, nice and close, okay? No. Lift the head on. It does not have teeth, it does not bite. Even closer, closer. Here we go. Yeah. No the left. The left. The left. The left. The left. The left. The But that's the worst part, when you think you have to fart and you're really worried that it might not be a fart. Uh, doo -doo. No, don't go Sammy, Sammy, I want to thank you that, with... That, that was real! That, well, that, was... <laughs> that was definitely real. Well, I'm serious. True. You know, you walk away, <laughs> that might leave a mark. Uh, sorry about the mess there. <laughs> Wash it off. Do do. I just sat there with a gun. We're just setting up the competition. <laughs> I'm just saying. Is that when you go look for a restroom at that point? Well, it might be too, too late. late. <laughs> uh, that was maybe Fart Fred in English. What do you think? He tried for hard. You tried, yes, but, but you've got to make sure you don't go all the way. You know, it's difficult to get the balance right, because you can have an accident. OK. This is my signature look. I think I may have just pooped myself. Like, there is a girl that Troy and I work with that came in, and she came in, and she's kind of higher up. And she's like, well, I have a question, all serious. And as she opened her mouth to ask the question, her butt opened at the same time. <laughs> and she just farted all the way through this question and went, Oops. <laughs> I couldn't even focus. I just kind of, and I thought, I'm at work, I can't laugh, because it's not funny at work. I mean, it is funny, but I would never do it at work. And when she left, as soon as she, I knew she got down to her office, I couldn't control myself the rest of the day. The day was over. Like, they should have just sent me home. I'm like, she just said, oh, whoops, and then walked out. Like, not even excuse me, but just. I'm like, you just opened your mouth and your butt at the same time. How can you even face me ever again? And being a boy, you, you know how it was. We just, you got to go, you got to go. Absolutely. So it's a natural human bodily function anyway, so. But it was seen as rude. It was seen as rude, absolutely. The louder you uh, sing, the uh, louder I fart. With a comment, Paul. I do feel in any case, um, in company, there's a time and a place for the farting, and, and, and I don't sort of fart around the dinner table, you know, unless I really know the people there and they're comfortable with it, because I understand that social etiquette. I am ready. Let's All start. together now. Let's do it. But my name is. Yes. That's exactly what my name is. And today, I give you the history of the whoopee cushion. No, but at my wedding, they tried to put a whoopee cushion on my chair. And my kid thought that was, it, my uncles are the ones that brought the darn thing. Ready, set. <laughs> the first known item that resembled a whoopee cushion was used by a Roman emperor by the name of Elagabala. And he tried to get me to go sit down and tried to, you know, be all nice and lead me by my hand. and. Like he was gonna seat his mother and all, and I saw the thing underneath my seat cover, and that blew the whole thing off him, all of them. So I didn't sit on it. This company put the word whoopee on 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 this cushion, whoopee cushion, and bingo. Then years later, in the early 1900s, two factory workers who were experimenting with leftover scraps of rubber discovered that if they glued two pieces of rubber together, they could make them farter face. <laughs> it wasn't the sort of thing that you would put, you know, have a big advertisement in the New Yorker, you know. But the thing caught, you know, caught on, uh, and, and, uh, and these were like mail order companies. The owner of Jim Rubber Co., the company where the factory workers worked, took this new item to the marketing geniuses of Samuel Adams, of sneezing powder fame in the early 1900s. But he passed on the product, saying that it was completely and totally undignified. You see him in the back of a, of a just a, a, a 
regular magazine, comic book, and or ordered, and they would send it to your door. And it became part of our culture. The rubber guy then went to Sam's competitor. That one was silent. The Johnson Smith Company. He sold novelty items such as fake vomit, x-ray goggles, and the buzzing handshaker. I don't even know if people use them as whoopee cushions anymore. I think they, they buy them just to have it, just, you know, just showing somebody a whoopee cushion has the effect. He saw the inherent value in the whoopee cushion and he began marketing it immediately. At which point, Samuel Adams then said, hey, that's a great idea, and made his own version of the whoopee cushion, called the raspberry cushion, which is what the English people call farts. You know, you know it's, it's like Pavlov, Pavlov's dog at, 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 at this point. All, you know, all, all, all they have to do is see the thing, and then they, they laugh, you know. Oh! Ah! Oh. <laughs> yeah! Yourself, what exactly is fart by mail? In the back it said farts just like dad used to make. Oh, that should be good. It's a mail order fart service where we send farts to your friends for you. <laughs> your friends also get a stunning professionally printed high gloss full color greeting card. peeled something and said peel off, it says smell here. I think I will avoid that <laughs> at all costs. It smells like real poo. Yeah, I guess that would be from our son. <laughs> um, I saw a fart extinguisher, which had, it was an air freshener, but it was in a little extinguisher bottle. It was very, very clever, quite a practical joke. It would have been a gift to give your father. <laughs> Um, I, I saw the Santa fart I... doll. Oh. On the first day of Christmas, my true love said to me. Santa Claus was saying the night before Christmas and he'd let it rip and he'd laugh and then he'd modify his story a little bit to include it. It was a, yeah, it's a strange thing. And Ma in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down to take a wig. <laughs> I think they normally complain but are laughing on the inside. No, we're complaining about the smell. That, that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> Lots of comedy in the UK it is actually based around uh, farting, isn't it? Good, yeah, I like the idea. Very good. <laughs> you try, I think when people on stage get nervous, so the muscle tenses up, so they're unable to fart. So it's very difficult to come up here and fart. Uh, when my daughter was little, she'd sit on my lap and she'd fart. Oh my God. Jake, and you're the king of walking by someone and farting and then leaving. What do we call that? Bingo deal. Crop dusting. Crop dusting. <laughs> there was a time and a place, though. But my my mom and dad, we would go to the grocery store. And my dad would, you know, leave one somewhere only for my mom to walk in it and be like. 
Or you're walking through the like the mall or something, and you're like, oh my god, what is that? Because you know it wasn't you, right. but somebody left that mark, and there's no one there. <laughs> it was that bad that it just kind of sat there for a while. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> our stench of flatulence comes from the bacteria inside our intestines. In the process of converting food into useful nutrients, the bacteria produces a smelly byproduct called hydrogen sulfide gas. Fart generating ingredients include sugar, fiber, and starches. What's unusual is how loud or how stinky. That's what sets, that's what sets you apart. I think it's different if you're the donor or the receiver. <laughs> You know, the odor issue really runs the gamut, probably relates more to the type of foods that you had to eat. So I don't think odor is something that you can reproducibly or predictably use as an indicator. Certainly a persistent foul odor that's maybe different than the past and, and continues maybe of some significance, but for the clinician, it's very hard to use odor as a gauge of what's going on. You know, typically when you have a loud fart, it doesn't smell. What's worse, noisy or stinky? Oh, stinky. Well, that's what, no, it's a smell noise thing, isn't it? No, the smell is terrible, but if it's not noise and you don't know who's done. Is this true? Nothing worse than the silent stinker. <laughs> you know, usually you got the noise maker that has no impact, and then those silent but deadly ones that kind of clear the room. He's both all in one. He's got the best one. of both worlds. Yeah, he's got, he's both. I'm a toss up, you never know. You yeah. never know. And then you have to come into which is the most obnoxious type? Is it the silent but violent? <laughs> that bad. Or the noisy but innocent? <laughs> Worse, in terms of producing humour, uh, I think uh, noise has more potential to produce humour. <laughs> as far as what might make me a bit squeamish, I think it's the smell. I don't know if he, <laughs> if he held it in for that. I you know, the noise is funny, but when it smells so bad, <laughs> that's just, just gross. That's a, yes. bonus. that's a bonus. Well, Jake and Deuce, do your farts reek? No. They really do. I mean, I didn't mind smells associated with farts too much uh, until, I, until I learned that smells are actually produced by physical molecules. <laughs> <laughs> whenever I remember that, whenever I think there's something physical from somebody else's <laughs> uh, insides, in my nostrils, then that tends to make me a bit queasy. Thank you for teaching me that. <laughs> there's actually particles in the air. Yeah, we know. We don't want to think about it. <gasps> really? Yeah, you really are tasting it. Oh. <laughs> the escapee, which takes place when trying to pee at the urinal or forcing a poop. <laughs> It's not like you just pooped on him. I mean, <laughs> well, sorta. It's in the air. I know. It went on his throat, right? <laughs> this is almost always followed by an overwhelming sense of shame and embarrassment. If this does take place, remain calm. Pretend it did not happen. If you are in the vicinity of this happening, do not acknowledge. It is uncomfortable for all involved. Well, children absolutely adore farting. Uh, just about every family. No, uh, no matter how proper they, they are, you know, has some kind of little expression that they use with the kids. You know, uh, uh, because everybody farts and ki kids fart and kids find farts funny. So adults have to deal with it in one way or another. <laughs> so they would have all these expressions like somebody let Fluffy off the leash. Uh, does somebody step on a duck? And if you've ever farted in the, sh in the shower, you know, facing away from the shower, you know that when you fart, it, it, it makes a, a quacking sound, you know. Quack. <laughs> when it came time for this third book, uh, that just seemed like a, like a good title. Stop. What does your daddy do that stinks? <laughs> Is that funny? And I'm brilliant at uh, making children laugh. Uh, but if you if I'm on if you happen to be on a long haul flight and there's a child crying, then I can I can stop them crying. I can make them laugh, and I do it by doing this. <laughs> uh, 
within seconds, they're falling about. <laughs> uh, there's just <laughs> something. With adults, it doesn't work quite so well. <laughs> With children, they love it. There's just something about that scent. My kids like my fart app on my Kindle. <laughs> if you need to clear a room fast, or just make someone laugh, I fart for the iPhone, maybe just what you're looking for. Select any of the sounds, but with new features like Sound Recorder, Fart a Friend, and many more, I fart changes everything. Think of it though, it's a noise that comes out of your butt. Well, <laughs> how is that? The coming round the mountain when she comes. Jerry's coming round the mountain when she comes. Uh, one candle is what? still. Oh, one left, one left. One left now. Make a wish, make a wish. <laughs> <laughs> My kids can't do it without announcing it. They'll do it, and of course, the whole world hears it. Mom, I've already had. <laughs> really? Yeah. Pull my finger. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were we were on a cruise ship, and my sisters and uh, we were all in the elevator. Well, the elevator fart. And the elevator door opened, and these people were getting in, and I said, "You don't want to come in here." <laughs> Do not go in there. <laughs> it was him. Yeah. I don't recall this story. <laughs> <laughs> it was in Alaska. Right, so what would you yes. say is your most embarrassing um, fart story? <laughs> <laughs> It's embarrassing for the person that does it, isn't it, sometimes? None of them are embarrassing for me. <laughs> <laughs> he just lets it rip. When it's time, it's time. I think, yes, it's obviously embarrassing if you're with complete strangers or people you've just recently met. And uh, I think in, in some circumstances, if someone does, uh, it, it's followed by silence and um, awkward silence. I don't, I'm not sure I get embarrassed about farting. Um, one time I had this big fart at Target. In that sense, it's it's not something that uh, I associate with uh, uh, humour in my own life, really. I can imagine some very prim and proper situations where the one that did it was probably terribly embarrassed or mortified, but everybody around him was just couldn't wait to get outside to bust out laughing, you know. Okay, and I should think it's staying off. You guys doing an outstanding job. I got the fork again. I got it again, Charlie. I mean, I haven't eaten this much citrus fruit in 20 years. So I'll tell you one thing, in another 12 years, I ain't never eaten anymore. I put them up over the, right up in there. They ain't there. Orion, Houston. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm down here where you have a hot mic. Well, we had that. Of course, if it's people you know or family, then uh, uh, somebody will make a witty Remark, that's right. If I want to fart, I just do. <laughs> it's, not, it's not me. I, I don't fart. If you toot, do you blame it on somebody else? No. Kind of no, not really. So you take responsibility for your own farts? Of course I do. How'd you know it was me? We knew. I don't know what you're hearing, but it's not me. Mm -mm. Denial. You normally don't raise your hand. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I don't announce it, uh, obviously. That was me. That was me. Actually, sometimes I do announce it, uh, but uh, it depends on the company, uh, I guess. Sometimes I, you know, I sneak them out, the same as everybody else does. Um, originally, when I started, obviously, uh, I, I discovered this ability to breathe um, with the bottom end. Okay. I'm just going to give you one for level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, that that was, was George Michael, that was. <laughs> <laughs> Careless whisper. I was introduced by um, Kelsey Grammer, Frasier of Cheers. You know, and he gives a monologue, and then he's with a, a lady actress, um, 
uh, I think her name was Brett Butler, and she says, oh, that farting guy was awful, you know. And he, his anecdote is, look, it, it's the first thing we ever laugh at in life, and possibly the only thing we can always laugh at. I, I, think, I think you know what's going on here now. Um, then it becomes less funny, and uh, adults who, are, who aspire to be more sophisticated and cultured tend to try and distance themselves from that kind of humour. Uh, but it's like any taboo, I suppose. Uh, it always has the potential to resurface uh, in humorous ways, and so it always tends to have a, you know, a, a, a humorous potential farting. Um, but yes, I mean, it's, it's more associated with uh, uh, children and childish uh, humor, uh, which is a shame. Swift you know, did a, a, wrote a lot of things about people farting because he sees all that as, a, as an expression of our basic uh, humanity that we're always trying to cover up and therefore it's always funnier than it really is. Can't you say something about the... you were in the underground in London with a lot of people. Oh, that's right. I, 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 I went to a, a soccer match, football match, many years ago and it was absolutely packed. You, like sardines. This is a Piccadilly line service to Oxbridge. You couldn't move. Oh couldn't gosh. move. One of my colleagues from work had been drinking beer, hot dogs, onions, the whole lot. Oh well, anyway, halfway along the journey, he dropped one. The moment um, I, I, I tentative, tentatively made this claim, to be the world's only performing flatulist. There were moans and you could tell, you could actually hear it passing up the, the coach, the carriage. I'm not so tentative now because I do know there are other flatulists or other people who perform my arm. As, as the, the complaints moved up the train. Gosh, and, and nobody could, you couldn't escape. You couldn't walk away, you couldn't do anything. And it, was, uh, it was disgusting. But to actually go out there and perform a show and, 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 and make a living out of it, uh, which I do. Strangely, I, I still find it bizarre, you know? And, I, and, and there's times when I try and retire and it's like a calling, it pulls me back. It pulls me back, it says, you won't do that. No, you will go to Japan, you know? And you will fart on the television on Fuji TV. Okay, <laughs> one. <laughs> For the entertainment value, of course. Not, not lots of times, but on a few occasions I've had ho hostile um, sort of reactions f from an audience. <laughs> Luckily, it's not a lot of the time, and I've had to sort of say, well, obviously it's not for you, and, and just wind it up. I, I think once was a, a, a BMW sales conference. I, I am ready. Is, is the orchestra ready? Are you ready? <laughs> He said, come on the show and we'll sing a duet. So I came on the show and we sang a duet of the Do Ron Ron. I met him on a Monday and my heart stood still. It was, you know, it was a piece of classic television. Hey, but... my heart stood still. That was it. I was never shown on the BBC. And, and by today's standards, it's quite mild. Yeah, his name was Bill. But at the time, it was just, no, nope, no. Nope. Yeah, I mean, we're going back, I think it was 1997. So, you know, attitudes were different. And, and really, when I create something, it's a labour of love. I just take it and re, reform it. But, you know, it's still a labour of love. This is what I do as, as a job. And, 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 it, and, and to me, that's a work of art. It's just the fart, you know what I mean? All you have to do is fart over it. They don't realise what a, a lot of hard work goes into that um, farting, really. You know, I once recorded a version of In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins. I remember. It's a very, you know, music is a precious creation. It's something they've created. So they're very, they like to laugh. A lot, a lot of uh, big artists like the fact that I've done in the air tonight by Phil Collins, you know. But if you turn round to them and say, well, could we do 
one of your tracks. Oh, no, 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 no. So, so they, they, they like to laugh, but you mustn't despoil their work. <laughs> I do understand that, 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 you know, when you create something and, it, in, and it's a work of, you know, in, in your eyes, that's a work of art. It's a labour of love. And then a guy comes along and farts all over it. I remember. In this country, there have been some big changes uh, since my book came out. Uh, in 1999, when Who Cut the Cheese came out, uh, of course, there, there were a lot of films by that time that had farted gags in them. But uh, the LA Times, for example, would not use that word. And then over time, I saw that, that they would start using the word fart uh, in the, you know, uh, uh, if they were talking about old people. You know, he's, a, you know, he's an old fart. We're so old we fart dust. And then gradually, they would start. They would. They would quote someone that says something about fart jokes because after after a while, the the, the idea of fart jokes in films became sort of like a big topic out, out here, because every every comedy had at least one fart joke scene, you know, and it became sort of like you know like the, the uh, a a, um, a bad example of. Comedy, you know, you know, is there, you know, can there be enough, at least one comedy film that doesn't have a fart joke in it? But I, I think uh, a lot of the, a lot of sort of comedy cowboy movies. Yeah, well, Blazing Saddles is the classic. If somebody would make a comment like that, the LA Times would print it. So gradually, they would, they, you know, they would, uh, the word fart crept into the, the um, new newspaper. And I think that really expresses the overall acceptance that's been going on for the last, well, let's see what, this is uh, 2013, so we're talking about, you know, if it was 14 years ago. I think in general it's best for people to get them out. No. <laughs> because <laughs> there's nothing worse than a cooked one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of humor is, is, sh is sh shock and shame, you know, that, that's, that's, that's all part of what's funny. We're all on the same road. Yes. With the ultimate goal, yes, right. but we're all different travelers. Head and also same, same experience of guests. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll ever forget this day. <laughs> well, it, it reminds us that no matter how high and mighty we may think we are, we may think we're part of no. the... <laughs> we're, we're, we're part of the angels or something, but when it comes down to it, we're, we're just like the dogs and the cats, you know. We, you know uh, we, we poop and pee and fart just like everybody else, like, like all the other an animals out there. Hey Randy, are farts flammable? Yes Ian, farts are flammable. The proper way to light a fart is to lie on your back with your legs up. <laughs> Probably more of what I would call one of those internet wives tales. Apparently the hydrogen sulfide that's produced in um, the bowel uh, has some potential to ignite. There you go. But I, I've never heard anyone that's done it, but it isn't in the realm of possible. Um, probably a good Mythbusters. Humans fart up to about a half a gallon a day. That's about 15 to 20 farts a day. Some a whole lot more. A human being farts 14 times a day. On average. 14 times a day. Do you know the volume? 14 times a day. I don't, I don't have that. No. <laughs> I don't think so. How many cc's of toxic gas? Does I hardly. That? And the mile per hour one is news to me. Uh, that very well made true. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how you measure that. But the 14. I've heard anywhere from 8 to 20 as being the normal range for most people. Oftentimes, you know, the flatulence is passed when you're sleeping or in a way that you don't even notice you're passing it. But uh, 14 is probably right. And seven miles per hour sounds good to me. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Either. I don't. I don't know how you measure. Right. Maybe they have a meter. <laughs> Flatometer or something. Or the uh, slow motion camera. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's it. There's a whole study of um, uh, flatology, so uh, maybe, maybe they've studied it. Well, that was laid on me. You know, uh, people said, "Well, can we call you a fartologist?" And I said, "Well, sure." Uh, you know, and it uh, it it, 
it, it helps sell books, I, I, I suppose. So what, what, is, what is the definition of a phartologist, I guess? Well, a phartologist is somebody who has been studying all the, 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 the um, phenomena of farting. When forcing a poop, sometimes a fart will take place in a rapid machine gun fashion, possibly as a result of drinking too much or of feeling sick. When this happens, keep calm and wait until the bathroom is cleared before planning your exit. I don't care anymore. I used to keep it in our, I used to go to the bathroom. In our family, there was a rating system. You know, there were, there were five of us, including the dog. And dad was top. Our daughter was number two stinky. Then was my son. Then was the dog. Then was me. Because <laughs> I made the system. <laughs> The sound, the, you know, the fart sound, I believe it's just from the, the anal opening, the anal sphincter of skin vibrating as the gas is expelled through normal peristalsis. Your colon can contract. As it contracts, it pushes things through, including gas. And it can push it through at apparently seven miles per hour. So um, the passage of the gas through the anal opening, the anal verge, produces um, a sound. Most. British men my age now, I should have a beer belly that I can, it's that big, I can rest, you know, I can rest a tray of chips and gravy on it and eat from, you know, and, but I haven't, you know, I keep, I keep farting fit. I don't know, I guess everything that we can, that we can explore or that we can be more honest about just breaks down more barriers. It just, you know, like you said, eliminate the shame, mm -hmm. eliminate the judgment. I mean, if we can all just agree that it's normal then there's not any reason to have anything other than laughter, right? Final summation. Farting is always fun. Farting with others is more fun. And making it like someone else farted, well, that's just money. It was my pleasure. <laughs> all right, now I'm gonna go fart. Thank you guys, yeah, now we've it all out. Come on, everybody! Koiki Mukan! Let's have a party! You're misinterpreting what I do. You know, you think I've got a gas problem. And, and, and I, what I've got is a control of my gas. What do you guys actually think about us doing a documentary about farting? I think it's fabulous. Can't wait to watch it. Can't wait to buy it and own it. Are, are you going to have to buy it? Are we going to have to buy it? <laughs> oh. I'll give you guys coffee now. I'm going to let it go. Hey, I, I don't know if I want to touch you. <laughs> <laughs> In front of the action. Yeah, I have, but it's a manly thing to Especially do. Especially if it's a spanker. <laughs> <laughs>